Butterfly in the Sky is a documentary about one of television's most iconic publicly broadcasted children's series and its equally iconic host, LeVar Burton, called Reading Rainbow. Reading Rainbow ran new episodes for 23 years on PBS, with reruns playing for another three, taking home more than 250 awards, 26 Emmys, 10 of which were for outstanding series. Its goal was to entertain, engage, and encourage children to read, and in those 26 years it did just that, inspiring millions of children and teaching them not just about the importance of reading, but the importance of finding themselves. Now, I don't remember how old I was when this happened, but it is one of my earliest memories um, around reading or books. The power had gone out and my mom um, lit some candles and gathered us around her to read a story uh, because this was her way of comforting uh, us and distracting us while the storm had passed. Uh, the book that she read was called Miss Tilly's Thanksgiving Dinner and it's by Lillian Hoban. I've always been an avid reader for as long as I can remember. Uh, some of my best memories uh, from inside in school were trips to the school library. And even when I got older, during the summer months, on days when like we didn't have enough money to go to the pool, I would go to the public library and spend all day there, sometimes through the evening until they closed. Now, that's not how reading works for everybody, right? In fact, what Reading Rainbow did was help kids who didn't have a natural predisposition to love reading find the joy in books and stories by presenting them in a way that made them more than just words on a page. Now, I'm not going to go into uh, the origins too deeply. In fact, I mean, all I'm going to say is that um, Reading Rainbow was created as a means to battle the decline of literacy during the summer months due to the increase of television use. Instead of trying to fight kids on not watching television, the idea was to bring the books to them through a television series. All of, and all of this was spearheaded by an educator called Twyla Liggett. Now the documentary does do a wonderful job at highlighting every person who touched Reading Rainbow from start to finish uh, with great guests, uh, including some of the children who used to do the book reviews at the end of the show. To see them as adults now, just lighting up, about their experience on Reading Rainbow and how that influenced their work today is amazing. Uh, one of my favorite guests, who, who wasn't a book review kid, um, but someone who was um, deeply affected by Reading Rainbow, is um, an author by the name of Jason Reynolds. He's the National Ambassador for Young People's Literature. And if you're not sure who that is, I do encourage you to look him up. He's made a huge impact in young adult fiction. Now, what I do want to talk about is the precedent of having a male black host, uh, LeVar Burton. Uh, I've worked in education uh, before, and one thing I had noticed, um, especially in early education and elementary education, was a serious lack of male educators. In fact, I worked for a, a program that had sort of hinted at the fact that they wouldn't or purposely try not to hire men in teaching positions if they could help it. And the idea behind that is because you know, and it, people think that men aren't capable um, or don't have the compassion or the ability to nurture young, impressionable minds, which is not true um, at all. Uh, men have been raising children for uh, since the beginning of time. Some men do it on their own. Uh, so that whole thought process is, is incorrect. And unfortunately, it still rings true today. Um, if you go into schools, you're still not going to find me a lot of men in um, like kindergarten teachers, first grade. That was early, early years. Um, or even before that, when you're going into preschool or like the Head Start programs, that you're not going to find men in those positions. It's all women. Um, and then you take it a step further and you're not going to see uh, a lot of black educators, um, e men or women. Which moves me on to the fact that not only did we have a male host for Reading Rainbow, but we had a black male host. Yeah, I think it was a, a risk that they knew they were taking at the time um, to put LeVar Burton at the forefront of this program um, just because of the, the, the racism and the um, stereotypes and the stigmas around um, 
black people and black men and having them in front of a camera to educate children or to encourage children. And that was such so, what's so great about LeVar Burton, right? Because he was so personable. Like he had that ability to draw you in and not just children, right? I mean, even adults were just so mesmerized by him. You know, he would get on your level, even though he's on a screen, he's still, it's like he's talking directly to you. And that's what made him so special for this. And then, and you know, he'd highlighted in the documentary about uh, one of the reasons why he loved doing this was being able to provide um, or being able to be a positive male role model um, for for black children, you know, because on television or in movies, and it's still today, it's still like this, um, where black people are stereotyped into these uh, characters who are criminals or um, drug dealers, or just, it's just very negative murderers, you know, and it's not very often you see a black person or black male in a positive light. And that's something that Jason Reynolds ha brings up a couple times in the documentary itself is, is how important it was for him even to have a black man on the screen, someone who looks like him, who, and then, but someone who's speaking so clearly and he's articulate and he's educated and, and to show that, you know, we can be more than than people th tell us that we can be, right? So I thoroughly enjoyed Butterfly in the Sky. I don't know when it's going to be, when or if it'll be released um, for like streaming or, or wherever they plan on letting other people see it now that it's not um, available at the Tribeca Film Festival anymore. Um, but I would encourage you when it does come available to go watch it. <laughs> it is full of nostalgia. Uh, it, it made me feel very warm, very happy um, to watch it, even though like there's the part where they talk about how it's how it had to end. Um, you know, they lost um, funding for um, public broadcasting for the television show. So they had to they had to cancel it. One of the parts in the documentary that I um, I guess I never knew about probably because I was so young. You know, so it's not something I would have looked into uh, was the legislation that was trying to pass to cancel funding for public broadcasting. Uh, I never I had no idea that ever happened. It's so it's so uh, infuriating now to hear that these legis these, uh, these politicians were working so hard to cancel things like Sesame Street and reading Rainbow, um, that were almost essential to early education for children, um, on the television. And, and it's, it's so appalling to think that that's, that that was something that they felt wasn't needed. And, and you know, the whole reason behind it is because it's not paid. Like there, there's no, there's no paid, um, advertising. So like you can't insert these messages in here and they have like this freedom to do whatever they want. And I think, and that still rings true today, like with the banning of books, you know, like trying to keep kids away from information then, and they're still trying to today. All right. So I didn't see the correlation back then as I see it now, um, which makes sense that why LeVar Burton is working so hard, um, against the banning of books and being so vocal about it. But I know that I'm not the only one who feels like that. I mean, anybody who grew up in the late 80s through the 90s knows what Reading Rainbow is. Uh, you can, yeah, like, you, you could play the, the intro to the, <laughs> to the theme song and almost everybody who's grown up in that era in that time frame just knows immediately what that is. In fact, every time I, I bring up um, the lyrics or talking about it. I mean, everybody knows what I'm talking about. Everybody's got a story. And in the famous words of LeVar Burton and Reading Rainbow, but you don't have to take my word for it.
I hope you guys all get a chance to watch the documentary when it comes out. In the meantime, uh, please leave me a comment, subscribe to our channel, like it, share uh, the videos, um, make sure you hit that notification bell. Uh, until next time, this is Morgan from Powerful Impact, keeping it real.